Greetings, Malefactors, my name is Sam, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about a game that I may never actually learn how to play properly, but I will gladly button mash through every instalment until the end of time. Roll, roll, air dodge, lose, John, repeat. Yes, that's right, I'm talking Super Smash Bros. Bros? But which character's name means bum? What's Marth been saying for all these years? And is Sam actually short for Samus? Sure, Samus is a lady, but I don't mind being named after such a badass lady. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so floaties, heavyweight newcomers all, gather round for 101 facts about Super Smash Bros. Number one. One of the most enduring rumours about 1999 Super Smash Bros. is that it was originally conceived for the SNES, but creator Masahiro Sakurai has dispelled this in interviews and even published the first page of his Smash 64 project proposal in his book Think About Video Games. But in spite of this, the long-standing myth just keeps… <laughs> recovering. Number two. During early development, Smash 64 was made pretty much entirely by Sakurai and the late, great Satoru Iwata. Sakurai, who had previously created the Kirby series, worked on game design and graphics after work, while Iwata programmed the game in his spare time, working it around his small job of being the freaking president of game developer HAL Laboratory. Number three. Words like Smash, Melee, and Brawl all give a pretty good indication of the game's content, but the game's original title was much more on the nose. Initially envisioned with no existing Nintendo characters, the game started its life with the roughly translated title Dragon King The Fighting Game. Number 4. This game took its name from the remote show Neighbourhood, where HAL Laboratory is based. Level backgrounds were taken from photos in the neighbourhood, and the fighters were strange dummy-like figures. Number 5. The game was originally nicknamed Pepsi Man, owing to these dummy characters having a metallic look, similar to Japan's creatively titled Pepsi Mascot of the same name. Some fans have even rallied online for the tooth rotting superhero to be included in the Smash series, but that would likely ruin the game based on Pepsi's famous power to calm large crowds of angry people. Hashtag Pepsi Lives Matter. Number 6. But during development, Sakurai had the idea that he could give the game a bit more of a personality, and define the world better by using licensed Nintendo characters. He knew the fight mechanics would be enough for an arcade audience, but believed the game needed main characters to translate to home console. Number 7. If you're wondering how they got Nintendo to sign off on the idea of Link wailing on Mario, well, they didn't. When Iwata took the proposal to Nintendo exec Shigeru Miyamoto, he sent him packing. But Iwata took a gamble and decided not to tell Sakurai, who went ahead with a demo featuring just Mario, Donkey Kong, Samus and Fox McCloud. But Iwata avoided a very uncomfortable conversation with Sakurai, because the demo was a hit and they received the green light. Number 8. The roster was expanded to 8 characters, it's funny because this is fact number 8, <laughs> with 4 more available to unlock. These characters were actually arranged in the order of their creation, starting in the top left with Mario and DK in 1981, through to Pikachu in 1996. Even the unlockables are arranged in this order, from 1983's Luigi to 96's Chigglypuff. Number 9. Top right on that screen, or Captain Falcon to his friends, had never been seen outside of his car, Blue Falcon, in the F-Zero series. So where exactly is this move set from? In fact, Falcon's general build and most of his moves are simply the amalgamation of all the leftovers of the original Dragon King fighters. Number 10. It's difficult to track down a single Nintendo character who hasn't been rumoured to have been planned for an inclusion in the series' first instalment, but the majority have nothing to support them. However, both Nintendo and Sakurai have confirmed that we were supposed to get Bowser, King DDD, and Mewtwo in the Smash Bros. Maiden Voyage. Number 11. Despite featuring characters from a range of already successful titles, Nintendo didn't have much confidence in the game, and originally planned it as a Japan-only release. But after its instant success, alterations were made to create a more approachable international version, which was released three months later. Number 12. In the Japanese version of the original game, Chigglybuff retains the Japanese name of Perrine, which, as a creature that communicates solely through the repetition of its own name, meant the voice actor was also different. Number 13. Other sounds that changed while travelling west included the fighting noises, which were originally more realistic somehow and graphic. They more closely resembled kung fu sound effects than the playful ones we ended up with, likely so the game could ensure a low age rating in America. Number 14. Some stage names also changed in translation from Japanese to English. For example, Saffron City was originally called Yamabuki City, which actually seems like it would have been easy enough for a Western audience to grasp. Number 15. On the flippity flip side though, it's not difficult at all to see why Dreamland's official name was changed. Although how great would it be if we stuck to the original title, Poo 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 Land. <laughs> it's where you're from. Number 16. Keeping it classy now, German versions of the Super Smash Bros. games changed Popo's name to Pepe, because in Deutschland, the word Popo refers to one's derriere. Although if it was called Butt in the English version, I'm not sure I'd ever play as anyone else. Number 17. 
Mario's voice actor, Charles Martini, is miscredited in the original Super Smash Bros. Instead, it was written as it sounds, uh, Charles Martini. Okay, that's difficult to convey in voiceover, but hopefully we'll fix that in post. Right, Chris? Right. Number 18. 2008 Super Smash Bros. Brawl introduced ridiculously OTT finishes known as Final Smashes. But creator Sakurai actually conceived the moves all the way back in the development for Smash 64. But the more he developed them, the more he realized the N64 just didn't have the capabilities to pull them off. Number 19. Evidence can still be found of the abandoned Final Smashes in the original title. Musical cues for some of the Smashes can be found in the game's data, some of which even went on to be used almost a decade later in Brawl. Number 20. In both Smash 64 and Melee in the Mushroom Kingdom stage, pausing and turning the camera all the way to the left or right will reveal a black wall and a sign saying DANGER. Although these are beyond the side blast line, so if you didn't know that already, you're probably not going to do very well. Number 21. Sonic and Tails have always been high on the list of characters that fans want to see in the series. Then in 2002, Electronic Gaming Monthly confirmed that the characters were already in the recently released Super Smash Bros. Melee. To get the famous hedgehog and weird mutant fox, they claimed players had to beat 20 or more enemies in Cruel Melee. But they later admitted the whole thing was an April Fool's prank. Although, to their credit, they did give you copies of Sonic Adventure 2 to players who could prove they'd achieved the challenge, so... Ah! Number 22! In adapting Delfino Plaza from 2002 Super Mario Sunshine for Smash Bros. Brawl, developers spared no detail. They even included the wanted posters for Shadow Mario, which can't even be seen within the playable areas of the stage. Number 23. In 2008, Brawl finally introduced Sonic the Hedgehog to the series, which was accompanied by a nod to Sonic's owners. In the Sonic section of Brawl's sound test are four songs from Sonic's Mega Drive days, Scrap Brain Zone, Emerald Hill Zone, Green Hill Zone, and Angel Island Zone. They're not in this order in the game, but when arranged like this, the first letters spell a no to Sonic's publishers, SEGA! Number 24. Uh... After Smash Bros. initial success, Nintendo put out a poll asking players who they want to see in future installments. Interestingly, this list included James Bond, from the Nintendo-published GoldenEye game. Bond ranked joint 6th, completely ruining the 007 pun I was writing in my head, but Sakurai had crushed any hopes of seeing the man with the license to kill in future games, reminding fans that Nintendo don't have their own license for either his game or movie rights. Number 25. <laughs> Sakurai also pointed to Bond's realistic weaponry to explain his omission from family-friendly games. Interesting, then, that the motion sensor bomb in every Super Smash Bros. game is almost identical to a weapon from GoldenEye 007. The game says its origin is top secret, although the credits attribute perfect dark. Number 26. Once you've beaten single-player mode of the first game with all eight starter characters, you'll unlock Mushroom Kingdom. This also grants you the pointless but strangely fascinating power of figuring out which characters weigh more than the others. In the centre of the stage are two connected platforms, and jumping on each with a different character will make them act like scales to tell you who's been packing on the pounds. Number 27. Speaking of weights, no one can seem to agree on Yoshi's. In Smash Bros, he's one of the heavier fighters on the roster, outweighing Samus and Ganondorf in the PAL versions of Melee, and weighs the same as Wario in Brawl. But in the Mario Kart and Mario Tennis spin-offs, he's either a light or middleweight character. Sort it out, Nintendo. That doesn't make any sense. Number 28. The Subspace Emissaries World Contest is a Super Smash Bros. fan fiction. Yep, that's right, didn't think that existed, did ya? Which, as of 2018, has over 4 million words. That's not only almost seven times the length of War and Peace, but made it, for a time, the single longest work of fiction ever written, until another fanfic took over. Which makes you wonder, where's all the one-on-one -on -one facts fanfic? Come on, guys. Number 29. A new Smash Bros. game with online capabilities was announced at E3 2005, which came as a surprise to its creator, who hadn't been told or asked to direct the game by Nintendo. Luckily, after the announcement, Iwata met with Sakurai and asked him to direct what would essentially become Brawl. Number 30. After fans objected to Brawl's new mechanics, generally slower gameplay and certain missing characters, they took it upon themselves to fix it. The result was the mod Project M, which reworks Brawl to play more like Melee and Smash 64. Development concluded in 2015 with version 3.6, and the result has been described as the best iteration of Smash Bros. Number 31. The first rule of Project M, though, is that you do not talk about Project M. Despite no official response from Nintendo, mentioning Project M in their Miiverse internet forum prior to its completion would result in a ban for discussing criminal activity. This hilariously led to the abbreviation PM, which Nintendo had to backtrack when people wanted to discuss Paper Mario I'm gonna touch a little bit. or, you know, any time after midday and found themselves banned. Number 32. Now we're getting an English-speaking Marth in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it seems only appropriate to figure out what Marth's been saying to us for the past 17 years. Choice phrases include his taunt, everyone look at me, and his victory poses, doesn't it seem I am the victor, and the extremely on the nose, today I have survived. 
Number 33. We almost heard Marth speak English as early as Melee. In the game's debug menu is an unused sound clip of Marth saying, let's dance, as part of what would have been the best entrance in the whole series. Number 34. It appears that Smash 64 was the only game in the series that creator Sakurai actually planned to make a sequel to. In a 2014 interview, he claimed, not for the first time, that both Melee and Brawl had been made with no intention of a follow-up. And in the very same interview, he suggested he was done with the series too, just four years before Ultimate was announced. Number 35. Mario's blue and pink alternate outfit comes from his signature look in the original Mario Brothers arcade game. Oh, looks like you died. Number 36. In every iteration of the Smash Brothers series, Zelda is an adult. But when Kirby takes her ability, he also dons her headdress from Ocarina of Time, which he only ever wore as a child and which appears nowhere else in the series. Who needs to have a chocolate syrup immediately? <laughs> Number 37. Captain Falcon has two clones in the game. There's Ganondorf, who's a clone in the sense they have similar movesets and physics, but there's also Blood Falcon, his evil clone in the F-Zero games. Captain Falcon's red colour swap is actually just Blood Falcon's uniform, down to the skull emblem on his jacket. Number 38. Ditto was planned as one of the Pokemon you could summon in Melee, and was cut so late into development that he was still included in the game's official guide, which explained that he would transform into the player who threw him and join them for a short time. It's possible to get Ditto back in the game from the remaining data, but he pretty much just appears, says his name, and then leaves. Number 39. Of the playable Pokemon in the Smash games, Pikachu is the only one to have a visible difference between gender. The Pikachu in the game is male, while a female has an indent at the end of their tail, which I think is supposed to look like the top of a heart, but let's face it, it looks more like a butt. But this gender difference was only introduced in Generation 4, which came out between Melee and Brawl. Number 40. But smashing through that glass ceiling with electricity and stuff, Brawl established a female Pikachu. The Pokemon will also have a playable female variant in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Hashtag feminism. Number 41. When using pre-existing characters, the naming process is pretty easy. That said, some characters have a custom name in their original series. Of these, the only one not to be given a default name in Smash is Pokemon Trainer. No one's sure why, seeing as the character's design clearly matches Red, the super creative name given to him in both Pokemon Gold and Silver. The meaning of life. Only three starter characters, well, technically four, have ever been cut from the roster. Pokemon Trainer, the Ice Climbers, and Lucas. Number 43. Kirby's dash attack changes in each of the first three games. In the 64 game, it's a footballer's slide tackle. In Melee, it's Burning Kirby from the Kirby games. And in Brawl, he does Yo-Yo Kirby's break spin from Kirby Superstar. Number 44. In the first two games, Mr. Ran's first name was announced closer to the Japanese pronunciation as Samus. But from Brawl onwards, it adopted the more Americanized Samus. Naturally, everyone accepted that calmly, and there have been absolutely no arguments. Number 45. In the Pokemon series, Chigglypuff's eyes are blue, but in the Super Smash Bros. series, they are coloured green. This technically makes the Chigglypuffs in Smash shiny Chigglypuffs. I wish I could tell 12-year-old me. Number 46. Somewhat disturbingly, it seems like Princess Peach can't appear in a game unless someone tries to force her into marriage. By now, you'd hope people would take the hint. But in the Super Smash Bros. universe, it appears someone has already won her hand. That's because in every Super Smash Bros. game, Peach has a mysterious ring on her middle finger, which does not feature in her other game appearances. Number 47. During development of Melee, Sakurai worked so tirelessly that he fainted from exhaustion at the end of one of the live soundtrack recordings. Reportedly, in the final months of development, Sakurai took one day off. What a slacker. Number 48. Despite barely being involved in Melee's development, the original game's programmer, Iwata, also worked tirelessly to ensure its release. When Melee's release was imminent and the game wasn't ready yet, Iwata spent three weeks debugging the game himself to ensure it released on time. Oh, and at this point, he was also the head of Nintendo's corporate planning division, so it's not like he had loads of free time either. Number 49. It's hard to picture it, but Marth and Roy were never intended to be included in the North American release of Melee. The decision makes sense, because the Fire Emblem games hadn't been released outside of Japan. In the end, though, their popularity in Super Smash Bros. paved the way for the American release of the Fire Emblem games. Number 50. As the series' only 2D fighter, you'd think Mr. Game & Watch would be pretty straightforward animation-wise. But the Smash Bros. team had determined not to make anything easy for themselves, and decided to design him as a fully three-dimensional model, which allows him to appear two-dimensional no matter what angle he's viewed from. Number 51. Pichu only graced the Smash Bros. roster once in 2001's Melee, and while he'll be back amongst the ranks in Ultimate, many believe he never left. That's because in Brawl, Pikachu's final smash is Volt Attack, a move that can only be learnt by an egg-born Pichu. He also wears the same goggles that Pichu wore, 
leading many to speculate that Brawl's Pikachu is actually an evolution of Melee's Pichu. Number 52. While rumours have been dispelled that Meowth was planned as a playable fighter in Smash 64, there's one feline fable that proved true. In the ice stage of Brawl's Pokemon Stadium 2, you can find a picture of a white kitten in a cabin that's long rumoured to belong to Sakurai. Sakurai has since denied ownership, but the mysterious kitty returned in Smash Bros. 4 and would be a playable character in Ultimate if I had my way. Number 53. In Brawl, Donkey Kong was finally able to fight alongside and against his best pal Diddy Kong, but Diddy almost brought a plus one to the party. His girlfriend, Dixie Kong, was planned to join too, but was cut from the final release. They were intended as a tag team as they appear in Donkey Kong Country 2, but the idea proved too technically difficult and developers scrapped it. Number 54. When fighting against Daisy, be careful trying to sneak up on her because a closer inspection of her trophy in melee uncovered a weird third eye in the side of her head. Let's just hope the third eye is, uh, <laughs> blind. No? Nothing? That joke would have killed in 1993. Number 55. The third announcer in the series, Pat Cashman, provided his voice in Brawl as announcer, master hand, and crazy hand. But you may also recognize his voice as the announcer for Bill Nye the Science Guy. The man just loves to announce. Number 56. Taylor Hicks placed 257th out of 709 competitors in the National Super Smash Bros. Melee competition in 2013. Why is that important information? Well, you may recognize the name from another competition Hicks took place in, although he fared much better in American Idol's fifth season 2006, which he won. Number 57. In every Smash he's made an appearance in, as well as Kirby 64, King DDD's haunting vocals have been provided by the creator of both series, Masahiro Sakurai, although special credit belongs to whichever demonic being has clearly set up shop in his larynx. Number 58. Both Animal Crossing's villager and the Mii characters were considered for inclusion in the Super Smash Bros. Brawl roster, but they were deemed too innocent and family-friendly for a fighting game. Luckily, developers got past all that silly morality in time to include them in Super Smash Bros. 4. Number 59. Keeping it in the family, director Masahiro Sakurai enlisted his wife, graphic designer Michiko Sakurai, to work on the Super Smash Bros. titles. She's worked on every installment, having designed the user interface, menus, and even some of the stages. Number 60. Maxim Tomatoes are about as valuable as cigarettes in Lockup, but for some reason, you can never find them on the original game's Hyrule Castle stage. Even if you set items only to spawn the life-saving fruit, every crate will either explode or contain absolutely zip. Number 61. As chaotic as it is, you'd be hard-pressed to find a player who didn't love Smash Bros. 4's 8-player Smash. It just makes it all the more frustrating that we didn't get it two games earlier, as Sakurai intended. But as usual, his mind was about a decade ahead of modern gaming technology, and he was forced to put it on the back burner. Number 62. In Melee's Fountain of Dreams stage, if Jigglypuff rests or Pichu crouches, they will close their eyes, but their reflection in the water will keep them open. Number 63. In the English language release of Melee, Mewtwo only communicates through grunts. But before you wish you could hear him speak, you might want to know that in the Japanese release, he speaks in full sentences when he wins, with unbelievably depressing catchphrases like, Why am I here? Super Smash Bros. 64. <laughs> in Melee's Temple stage, what appeared to be Hylian text could be spotted around the stage, but actually, it was gibberish. When the stage was updated for the Wii U, though, they realized the resolution would make it legible, so they changed it to actual Hylian. The text can be translated to the Romanized Japanese words, Sumashu Burazazu. For anyone whose Romanized Japanese is still a little rustly, let me translate it again. Smash Brothers. Which, if I'm being honest, feels like a waste of four weeks on Hylian and Japanese on Duolingo. Number 65. In the data for Brawl, you can find unused textures for a damaged Hylian shield, as well as a scratched Meta Knight mask and a cracked Captain Falcon helmet, which Sakurai has revealed were part of a scrapped plan to show battle damage and disadvantage injured players by removing armor. Number 66. Being the taller brother, you'd think Luigi might have avoided the humiliating torment of having to live off his older brother's hand-me-downs. But in Melee, he didn't even get his own voice. Instead, he relied on a pitch-altered version of his bigger brother. Number 67. In Melee, Sakurai wanted to introduce a representative from Nintendo's classic NES era. He considered characters from Balloon Fighter, Urban Champion, Excite Bike, and Clue Clue Land, but ultimately settled on Popo and Nana from Ice Climber. Number 68. Reportedly, Excited Bike characters were only pipped to the post because Sakurai couldn't figure out how they'd move around the stage, given that they are, as the title suggests, on bikes and they need ramps to jump. Number 69. Smash, bro. Wait, what? HAL Laboratory, who developed the first two games in the series, got their name from HAL 9000, the villainous computer from the 2001 A Space Odyssey film. This is not because they hoped their creations would one day turn sentient and homicidal, but because they wanted to keep one step ahead of IMB, as the letters in HAL do alphabetically. 
That's despite the fact 2001's author had denied this coincidence as an intentional dig at the company. Number 70. In the original game, Kirby's bio reveals that he comes in at a height of 8 inches. <laughs> oh, there's absolutely no jokes I won't get us to monetize. Moving on. Eight Number 71. <laughs> The cloud in Yoshi's story has never been officially named, but one post in Smash Boards, the leading Super Smash Bros. forum, coined the title of Randall, and the gaming world just adopted that without question. Number 72. The only character to share an exact name with a stage is Duck Hunt. That is a nightmare to say quickly. Which may sound impressive, but I could probably do that if my name was also a verb too. Number 73. In case you didn't catch it in the intro, the name John is given to any excuse given for why a player lost a fight. Because what would Super Smash Bros. be without one person who blames the faulty controller? The term and the accompanying phrase originates from one of the best crews of the melee era, the Crystal City crew, and a whiny member called... <laughs> well, you can figure that out, right? Number 74. Both Zelda and Sheik and Samus and Zero Suit Samus were intended to have a Tyler Durden thing going on in Super Smash Bros. 4. Each pair were intended as two parts of an individual character, but the 3DS's hardware restrictions round them up as four separate characters instead. Number 75. Fighting on a train is dangerous enough without having to worry about who's at the wheel, or stick, however trains work. That's why if you play as Toon Link or Link on Super Smash Bros. 4 Spirit Train Stage, Alfonso will replace Toon Link as the conductor. Number 76. Similarly, playing as King DDD in Dreamland will mean he won't be seen in the background, because if he was in two places while fighting on a floating platform in a multicolored sky, it would be just unrealistic, wouldn't it? Number 77. Elsewhere in Smash Bros. 4, the dollar dollar bills you'll use in coin battle are complete with an image of Nintendo's Kyoto headquarters. Number 78. Wily e. Coyote's worst nightmare, the blast zones in Mushroom Kingdom 2, are so close to the cliff edges at the side of each screen that you can actually see them if you pull the camera out far enough. It's such a dangerous level, in fact, it's banned from official competitions. Number 79. The fourth game in the series was the only one not to include newcomers from the Legend of Zelda or Star Fox franchises. Although, barring some very late announcements, Ultimate is set to continue that trend, and it seems we may never see Tingle join the roster. Number 80. Metal Mario on the wall. Sorry. In Melee, the shiny surface of the Metal Mario trophy acts as a mirror, which reflects the Yoshi's Island stage from the game. Hmm. Number 81. These reflection textures are a great detail, but developers might have hoped that players didn't look that closely when they included an image of Oso Castle in several Melee trophies. The castle comes from Earthbound 64, which was cancelled a year before the release of Melee. Awkward. Number 82. For all the universes Super Smash Bros. borrows from, you'd think it would crop up more throughout Nintendo's various releases. Well, you can show your support for the series in Metroid Prime 3, in which the series logo is available as a bumper sticker. Number 83. Players technically had to wait until Super Smash Bros. 4 to play as Zero Suit Samus. You're probably thinking she was playable in Brawl and that I'm a stupid, ugly idiot. Well, I'm not an idiot, because in Brawl, her name was actually misspelled Zero Suit Samus, okay? So there. Sorry, I need to calm down. Um, Jennifer Lawrence has been answering my calls again, so I'm a bit wound up. Number 84. Including Ditto, Super Smash Bros. 4 allows for 1,711 character matchups in a 1v1 match. Number 85. Melee's Event 39 stage includes a large screen, playing back the event of the fight. As well as making you really self-conscious about your playing, it also provides the basis for the easter egg, Sleepy Time. That's where players who use Sing while their image is on the screen will make their opponents sleep for much longer than usual. Number 86. This, and the fact that level is entirely inhabited by Chigglypuffs, is likely a reference to the fact that Chigglypuff is number 39 in the national decks of the Pokemon games. Number 87. Your chances of getting Mew, Celebi, or Tarachi in a Pokeball in Brawl is exactly 1 out of 493. That's because there are 493 Pokemon in Generation 4. Which is cool and all, just not enough to make me accept there are more than 150. Because there aren't, are there? Not any that matter anyway. Number 88. Leftover character data in Brawl reveals planned but ultimately undeveloped characters. All of which are easily identifiable by their file names. That is except for Pra Mai. The most popular theory is that Pra Mai refers to the Japanese names for Plasil and Minen, otherwise known as Prasil and Minen. But this is put into doubt by the fact that the two would likely have separate character files, as is the case with the Ice Climbers. Also, none of the games refer to other Pokemon by their Japanese names, so the plot thickens. Number 89. In Melee, rotating the Barrel Cannon Trophy will reveal an Easter egg on the bottom, in the form of the message 2L84Me, likely referencing the KO that typically follows on from being shot out of a barrel, and the final thought going through the head of the shootee. Number, no, number 90. 
In Melee's Onet stage, standing just right of the blue house, pausing and zooming out, we'll reveal the Onet message board, which reads, Caution, a black van driven by this guy has been spotted racing recklessly through town. Be careful. This references the Runaway 5's reckless driving in Earthbound, which itself is a reference to the Blues Brothers, on which the characters are based. It's more meta than Meta Knight. <laughs> Number 91. Although I keep lazily referring to the Wii U and 3DS installments of the series as Super Smash Bros. 4, their creator, Sakurai, actually considers them to be two separate installments of the series, making Ultimate the sixth entry. So, Mr. Sakurai, if you're watching this, I want to say I'm sorry. And also ask, what is your skincare secret? Because honestly, the man does not age. Number 92. Ultimate will be compatible with multiple controllers, including the Switch Pro, a single Joy-Con, and most importantly, the GameCube controller. Q an entire generation getting angry at their mums for throwing out their old controllers. Number 93. In case you didn't gather from the name, by the way, Ultimate is pulling out all the stops to outdo its predecessors. That's why the game features its largest roster yet, with over 70 fighters confirmed, plus at least six more from DLCs. That guest list includes every character who's ever been playable in the Smash Brothers series, Smash 4 DLCs, and everything. Number 94. 11 of these fighters will be brand spanking new, the first three of which Nintendo unveiled at their 2018 E3 presentation, Inkling from Splatoon, Daisy from the Mario series, and Ridley from Metroid. But not Daisy Ridley from Star Wars, that's an important distinction I should make. Number 95. Ridley's unique movesets will allow the player to spew fire at their opponent and spear them on his tail. Inkling, on the other hand, will be equipped with the Splat Blobs and Splat Roller from the Splatooniverse, which will make their opponents... Need some new clothes, I guess? I think I know who I'm picking. Number 96. Before E3, we not only had no idea who the new fighters would be, we didn't even know if it would be a full game. When news of Ultimate first hit, no one was sure whether it would be a brand new title or simply an expanded port of the Wii U game, as with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Number 97. Masahiro Sakurai revealed that during the development of Melee, the creator of the Metal Gear series, Hideo Kojima, called him with a request. Supposedly, Kojima was such a fan of the first game that he practically begged Sakurai to include Metal Gear Snake as a fighter in the new game. Unfortunately, it was too far into development, but Sakurai told Kojima he would add Snake if they made another installment, which they did, and he did. Number 98. 31 years after the first Metal Gear game, Snake was announced on the Smash Brothers website as the 31st character to join the Ultimate roster. Voice actor David Hayter will be reclaiming the role, after it was handed in the Metal Gear series to Kiefer Sutherland, who was in 24, just to keep the numbers motif going. Number 99. Despite all these returning favourites and fresh faces, the game's starting fighter selection screen will include eight characters, meaning characters start the game with the exact fighters they started with all the way back in 64. Number 100. Nintendo have confirmed that the new game will offer 103 different stages, each complete with a battlefield and final destination form. Ooh, final destination. All told, that makes more than 300 levels in which to smash. If you're worried about working your way through all of them, fear not, because Nintendo have introduced Stage Morph, which makes stages more from one to another mid-match. Number 101. Trophies will be replaced in the new game by collectibles called Spirits. These spirits will be character artwork from various games, and will power up your fighter when equipped. Unlike the spirits I equipped to myself, which just makes me think I can fight people. So that was 101 facts about Super Smash Bros. Who's your favourite fighter? Who would you like to see added in the next game? Because there will be a next one, won't there? It's inevitable. Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give this video a like, and hey, subscribe to 101 Facts already if you haven't done so, because, well, would you want to miss this every week, would you? Hmm? Didn't think so. In the meantime, though, oh god, look at this. Two videos especially for you. At least one of them will make all your dreams come true. Not to guarantee. So click on one and enjoy it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.